Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. As you all know, I recently got engaged to my Vani Wani. <laughs> and like many other couples, I'm currently dealing with the fact that a wedding can be one of the most expensive events we've ever planned in our whole entire lives. But <laughs> with some thoughtful planning, you can have a day you treasure forever, but not break your budget. We all know I like to save a coin. So today, our friend Brian Keith and my new wedding planner is here <laughs> to give us some tips to help us save some moolah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so let's start with wedding dresses. Yes. They can be super de duper expensive. So how can we save on our wedding dresses? Wedding dresses can be incredibly expensive, but yeah, we right. know that that's the most important part of a bride mm -hmm. while planning a wedding, right? So I'm gonna give you three tips on how to save. Okay. One of them is going to your local bridal boutique and asking for sample dresses or sample um, dress sizes what from about six to 10. Okay, six to 10, okay. Six to 10. All right, that's in but that range. But you can go to your seamstress and get it fitted and tucked and pulled and all that good stuff. But these are at discounted rates. So we're talking Ooh. about sometimes almost half <gasps> of the cost. Yes. And then also check with your local um, pre-owned bridal boutique for 30 to 70% off on these bridal gowns as well. Okay. Some of my favorites are um, Gown Collective and The Sentimentalist, which is a tongue twister, but I promise they're gorgeous. The Sentimentalist. The Sentimentalist. Yes. But their dresses are gorgeous. Yes. Check them out. Um, one of the second ones would be formal wear. Mm -hmm. A lot of ladies forget about the formal wear. A gown um, at a formal dress store can be half the cost. When you take bridal gown out of the word, yes, it decreases the price. I mean, why does it seem like as soon as you say wedding, the price seems to go up it does. like 60 to 70 percent. If you're saying, okay, we're just having a party, blah, blah, yes. blah, 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 it's one price. You say that word wedding, I mean, it, they just gouge you wedding like instantly. Can, weddings can be expensive, but that's why I'm here to help you save. <laughs> Trina, yes. you see what I'm saying? But now, one of my favorite, favorite is the bridal trunk shows. Yes. A lot of you ladies forget about that. Do not forget about the bridal trunk shows because they have designer gowns, again, at discounted prices. We're talking about sometimes almost half. I like discounts. Okay. Okay, and we all know the dress can be very, very expensive, but let's talk about the bulk yes. of the wedding expense. The venue. The venue. That's a huge chunk of your the budget. Venue. How yes. can we save? On so, the venue. here we go. Non-traditional brides are okay with Wednesday, Thursday. I've even done weddings on Mondays. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're talking about one thousand dollars or more that you're saving because this is not peak time. Saturday's peak time. Yeah. They're not gonna budge on their price because it's the time when everyone wants to get married. So Friday or Sunday, or during the week. Or a daytime wedding. Daytime weddings are also money savers as well. So check with your venue and see if they offer discounts for daytime or Friday or Sunday. See, but that's not fair because they know people work throughout the week. So th then your guests can't come in. But, but you but, have to tell them early so they can take a day off. But I'm gonna tell you why that's a good idea. Uh -huh. Because that way everybody can't come. Because <laughs> the guest list. See, we're gonna talk <laughs> about, about that. The guest list. Now, now the guest list is important because we can go over the budget just by the guest list. Yes, that's so taking I, hundreds of people out to dinner. Correct. So what I tell my bride and grooms, if you have not spoken to these people within six months, mm -hmm. Don't send them an invitation. Ooh, that's a good one. If Family we haven't spoken to you in six months, you're not invited. Family or friends. Doesn't matter. Family or friends. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So six that, months. So that's a, that's a good way. Or have an intimate wedding with 75 guests or less. That's not going to happen in my family. There's already just eight of us in my core family. But I mean, you know, what, but, you but, add but, everybody that's 75 but, already? But see, these other things are going to help you save. Okay. We, we can't do that for the Braxtons. Yeah, we can't have 75. See, that's nice. I'm so, trying to get married on the beach, too. <laughs> 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 okay, so how can we say, now this is another big chunk. Yes. The menu. The menu. The food. The food, which most people are coming to weddings for. The food. The, the food. Cake, and to see the bride's dress, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite ways is having heavy pass appetizers during cocktail hour. So when you do that, you're serving smaller bites. You can still have what you want, mm -hmm. but in smaller bites. And then after that, you go straight to the party. So that's a money saver. Or you can create stations with different types of food. People getting up, they're mingling, they're serving themselves. Because when you have a sit down dinner, which is very expensive. Which I'm doing though. I'm it's doing expensive that. because you have servers and you know what I'm saying? So it gets really expensive. So well, when you're a bride, you want to be able to enjoy. So having all that buffet, not a buffet, a buffet. That's why we say stations. You know, it's just, you know. 
They just uh, make it sound cute. When cuter. you sit down, you can actually enjoy yourself. Yes. But see, you get served because you're the bride. Are you trying to drink? And speaking of drinking, you know, the cocktails, they, they drop, that's a lot of money. It is. Open bars are one moment. But I have three ways to okay. help you say. Okay. The first way is a cash bar. Now, let me tell mm -hmm. you. Let me tell you. It is not offensive to ask your guests it is. to pay. It's really not. Because what I've found out is this nasty trend that we have. People mm -hmm. don't bring you gifts. They don't bring you gifts anymore. So just make them pay for the bar. They don't, they don't bring gifts anymore? It's, it's sad. I want you to stop, though. I want, I want a wave runner. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I want a sea dude. Now listen, we need, to, we need all your guests I to come. I think all my guests can, they can get together collectively. So no intimate so for you. So I can get my wave runner. Because you want that? Yes, see that? See, see? But also another way to um, do that as well is um, just making sure that um, you go to liquor companies mm -hmm. and sell back the liquor that <gasps> really? you do not open. What about signature drinks? Signature drinks are also fun, very fun. It's a drink all throughout the night. They yes. are fun. They're, they're festive. And then again, you're saving on liquors and mixers. Yes, that so way again, it's the same, um, same alcohol all night without having to, oh, I want this, I want that, I want the other. Exactly. See, I need you here for like the whole hour. <laughs> but I, I, Brian, I thank you so much for this awesome information because thank I'm going to take it me. and I'm going to use it for our wedding when you um, are my yes. wedding person. Yes. And you know, for more info <laughs> on how you can save on your wedding, go to briankeithproductions.com.